This is a deck, or this is a game rather, that I played a couple days ago, and I don't actually remember what it was about, but I have it labeled here in my my little playlist: "Patience for Big Payoff." So that's what we're gonna. That's what we're going for here, man. We're going for being patient for our big payoff. So I'm playing some more of that Control Airden. Of course, I did say uh, this is one of my favorite decks. I'm play, gonna be playing a lot of it. Uh, I may switch to Emir Spies here pretty soon. Or maybe discard brand, but for now, I've been having a lot of fun with Control Air, and it's a very chill deck. You get it? Chill? Okay. So he's playing like a veteran brand. I'm not really sure what this deck is all about. I'm just going to kind of fast forward a little bit because I'm actually not really sure what goes on in this game. Start getting that fog out. He plays his Hey May Maiden, gets another veteran. It's really cool. I really like that card. Uh, if you don't know, it's a scout. Uh, it's like a Weaver Scout, and it will pull it from your deck if you have one on the field. It's really nice. Play out my Drowner, just get some value out of that. Uh, that's actually kind of a bit of a mistake, because if he does have a Armor Smith, he can just heal both of those all the way up and give him armor. So I shouldn't have done that. That's kind of like the thing that I learned while watching Gwent Slam, is that uh, a lot of these Skellige decks will play Armor Smith. And if I'm playing a Disruption kind of weathery deck, then they can just heal through it and then block themselves. So something I have to really be careful of. Oh my, he does actually punish me for this opportunity. <laughs> I was just thinking the worst possible thing he can do is punish me. And he totally does. And now my weather is effectively useless. But I can uh, kind of make up for my shortcoming a little bit by trying to kill his Armorsmith. I still get some weather ticking at least for a couple more turns. If I can just get past this like early hump, that I can get enough momentum that I can do other things. Uh, Clear Skies is not really useful here because he has a lot of armor. I think that was a bit of a mistake. Because he has that... Uh, I guess I'm assuming that it's because he doesn't have any more armor smiths. Or maybe he doesn't even have a revive to revive it after death. But anyway. So I'm not really sure what to go for here. I think I'm looking for... Because I have a Renew in my hand, I'm just trying to play out my Gales a little bit, maybe a preemptively. Because I'm kind of looking for Wilden Spirit here. I don't get it. Uh, Caretaker is not going to work, so I'm just going to go with Dor Dor Gray, I believe. Yeah, I have to go with Dor Gray. But what I can do is consume my Gales so that I can then use uh, Renew. I go for some carry over here. There's not much point in Drownering or using anything else. Carry over is the best option in that opportunity. Plays out a second hand made and goes out for his another for his third veteran card, which kind of scales with effectiveness at a linear rate. I'll speed this up a little bit. Establish more carryover. These are some low tempo plays, but I'm still saying staying ahead of him. Plays out a harpooner, which is a little bit unexpected. Kind of hit me pretty hard. Go for the commander sworn. Um, why did I go for commander sworn here? Uh, because I wasn't really feeling the rest of my cards. The thing is, okay, so my game plan was to play Commander Sworn and then play out the Spy, and then maybe play out um, the Mage, Three Strength Mage, uh, to catch up on the tempo that I lose for playing the Spy. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really sold on this little course of action that I did here. I think I could have passed and had my carryover win me the next round, and then we go into round three, and then I use Commander Sworn there. But I really wanted to take it this first round. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that was the greatest of plays, but it was the play I came up with. I think it's because specifically that I had a an Ekimara that was weakened and I wanted to uh, strengthen it. Now. Now, okay, never mind. I was going to say I should have positioned my Ekimara on the other side of the on the board, but I actually didn't have an opportunity to do so. So he gets a really big play. He not only gets rid of 13 points of value from me, but he also gets rid of my carryover, which really hurt. So this is I'm resorting to my my spy plan without actually using the spy and trying to catch up on tempo. And this is pretty much about uh, the point where I'm looking to bow out. I never actually got to consume the elves, which was a mistake. I should have consumed him. It's funny, like I kind of saw that in Gwent Slam as well. I learned a lot of things from watching Gwent Slam. If you haven't seen it, totally should. It's the, the Gwent tournament where, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's a, a pretty big tournament. Really nice, really well done. And I learned a lot uh, from it. One of those things is consume Gale, so you can use Renew in that same round. 
And that's kind of like a basic thing that I just never really thought about doing. I mean, I've thought about doing it. I just kind of forget about it. I was mostly looking for Woodland Spirit. That's like my go-to renew. It's a Woodland Spirit round one and then renew it round two or three. So I go, I go out the ghost by this point. He get, he passes on me. I can't really pass his strength from this point. I don't think. So I just give it up. Just give it up. Just give it up. Just pass. There we go. Okay. So this is looking really bleak, right? Uh, so I, I went with one card up, which is what I should have done since he went. Since he went first, I don't think I should have played my spy there. I could have saved my spy for a better opportunity. Uh, but I think I was just kind of floundering. This might have been at the end of my play session where I was just getting tired and I was just kind of like making mistakes. That might have been it because I'm, I've made some pretty stupid mistakes so far. So he plays out this this big old dude, the skirmisher, I think it's called. Play my renew, get the gales out, hoping for that woodland spirit. Get the woodland spirit, play it down. Why didn't I play Scorch? Because he's just going to bring it right back uh, to life with uh, another revive. Uh, th like what I'm hoping for here is exactly the situation in which he passes. Okay, this is where the patience for a big payoff. This isn't as uh, as dramatic as I remember it being. So basically, I could have gone into this round. Wait, no. The first he goes first. The first thing he does is revive this, and then go and I play my woodland spirit. Yeah. Six. And also, my carryover from the Kamara actually allowed me to do that and win the game. The match, rather. Uh, yeah, because this is a really high tempo play that he played. And my Woodland Spirit is high, but it's not that high. Uh, so my camera saved me a card. Yay. That was helpful. So now, because of that, I'm able to go into this next round on same cards. One card up. Yeah, one card up. So I'm able to retain that advantage. Even though I didn't play my Spy in the best situation there in round one, I still came away with a pretty good situation. I, I kind of get screwed on my Mulligan there. I immediately use my caretaker to pull out his skirmisher. I guess that was the patience for a big payoff, man. I was way too dramatic with that that title. <laughs> uh, in fact, that's not being patient. I used my caretaker on his skirmisher at the very first opportunity that I was able to. So I play out my Biting Frost, and I guess the rest of this game is kind of boring. Hopefully there's something else in here that maybe maybe there's some like really big moment that I'm missing. Because, yeah, I stole his win condition with my caretaker, but is there anything more than that? Whoop. Play Clan of Harpy. Plays Grimmest. Plays Clear Skies. I don't think he should have done that. He should have played uh, the Blood Curdling, Blood Curdling Roar on his Priestess. Play out my second. I wasn't actually expecting to... I wasn't actually trying to conserve my Frost in that situation because I didn't think he would clear it like that again but i just kind of get lucky so he's kind of hovering over his unit so it makes me think it's like a, dec a decoy or something to clear the weather again uh this is a, definitely oh yeah there's a decoy so maybe that's why he did it that makes sense i guess yeah okay that makes sense he didn't play blood curling war because he wants to decoy out the priest of freya uh decoy is such a like unusual like unseen card these days so i pull that to the main row start getting some damage off and then he harpooners me. Huh. I guess that's it. <laughs> I guess that's it, man. Patience for big payoff just means using my caretaker at the very first opportunity. And I won by one point. Okay, maybe that's why I was kind of dramatizing it, because I won by one point. I guess bad as my hand was, but not only stealing his win condition, I also added it to mine. Uh, let me think back to this game. Was there anything else interesting that happened besides that? He's playing an interesting deck. Bit of a mistake sometimes here and there. I made some mistakes. Okay, how about this? Uh, consume consume Gales with your Akimara in round one so that you can use a Renew on it immediately. <laughs> There's point one. Point two. Look for your opponent's winning condition and steal with Caretaker. I've said that a million times, but there we go. Point two. Uh, point three. I don't have a point three. Oh well, <laughs> you win some, you lose some. There we go. Let me uh, let me scrub through this game one more time, just just so I can see something. 
Uh, he played a pretty interesting deck. Uh, yeah, I made, I made a pretty big mistake. Here, look, let's take a, a closer look at why this is a mistake and what I did here in round one. Okay. Because uh, actually, okay, so, so since the rest of this video was kind of like lackluster or whatever, we'll take a more critical look at why I made this mistake. So I'm looking at this board right here, right? So my game plan, like I said earlier, was to Commander Sworn and then use a Spy. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get... Uh, a significant amount of tempo over him and for I hope that he plays a low tempo play so that I can be afforded to play a spy but the thing is I'm already super behind his tempo so playing commander storm is only just barely going to pass him excuse me um so we're looking at this and I'm 13 strength down what is going to get me 13 strength uh commander storm is one uh renew is not going to do anything because I didn't consume gale as when I should have assuming that I'm thinking of the single thing correctly I don't believe because there's no weather, uh, the drowner's not going to get it. I could do it since I went second, but I w I'd like to be able to pass him. Uh, looking at this next card, it's like three, it's three by four, right? And it would be it would do four plus six is ten, thirteen. So this would tie the round. I should have just gone for either this, assuming he plays no weather. I should have gone for my mage. Or I should have passed the round. And passing the round is actually probably the better option in that situation. Actually, I, I guess I could have played Drowner. Because I'm not too... I don't have any more weather in my hand. I'm not too worried about further rounds. And then I kind of pass it and maybe play one more card. Okay, so I should have gone into this this round with the idea that I was not going to win it. And I need to save my Commander Sworn as my finisher for round three. I think also another thing, I was scared because I hadn't pulled into my Woodland Spirit. And if I don't pull into Woodland Spirit, then Commander Sworn's effectiveness goes way, way down. So it was a mixture of things. I think I just kind of got scared and I wasn't thinking, thinking correctly. And I didn't play Gales correctly around my Akimaras. So I made a bundle of mistakes here that led to one big... I did win the game in the end, but I only won by one point. It could have been a lot cleaner. If my sequencing was better, if my thought, my playmaking was a bit better, I should not have played Commander Sworn here. I should not have been trying to go for the win. I should not have played a Spy, uh, as you see here. As you see the letter. Not only does this leave me vulnerable to things like uh, Igni, Scorch, Blizzard, but also Coral, because... Most Skeleton decks run Coral. I should have been thinking about Coral, but I didn't. I completely ignored it. I forgot about it, I, and I get punished really hard here. Not Again, not just for losing my carryover, but for also losing that 13 points of strength, and he just gets an easy, easy target to hit there. I should have been thinking about that, and I wasn't. I was so, uh, like, tunnel-visioned on trying to go with my own game plan that I wasn't reacting enough to my opponents. And now I'm still, by this point, just trying to salvage it a little bit by going for my mage uh, in a situation where I know I pass his strength. And I'm just looking to get out of the round. But he follows up with... What does he follow up with? Plays his leader, right? And then his leader is a ton of tempo that he's going to be getting down. One mistake I make, uh, I don't actually check his graveyard for the third card, which I definitely should have, but I didn't. I'm assuming it was... Actually, I don't know what it was. So he plays out this. And it's 15 strength. I should have just passed. I should have just passed. But instead, I try and like pretend to threaten like I have something. Even though he has armor and the, like this row stack isn't actually that big of a deal. I should have just saved my spy. Because the thing is, playing the spy... Uh, granted, he doesn't have any carryover. Wait, no. Playing a spy against carryover is only matter if I win. Uh, it's totally possible. Like, and I'm not even going to overplay on my tempo in the next round because, on average, his tempo, his strength value per turn is going to be higher than mine. So all I have to do is barely catch up to his. I'm not going to have an opportunity to use the spy in round two. Wait, I just <laughs> like in the course of that that sentence, I somehow managed to flip the situation. So maybe playing the spy there was not a terrible idea. Yeah, okay, playing the spy there was not a terrible idea considering. Like, my hand is pretty weak. Uh, his average tempo is going to be higher than mine. I'm not gonna have, he's not going to bleed me out too much. I'm not too worried about that. So I guess playing Spider is not that big a deal. But th the idea that I was going to try and threaten something was completely not a, a non-factor. So the only thing I did there was thin the was thin the Spy out of my deck. Which I think is fine. That's fine. Okay, so that's not a mistake. Uh, yeah. Since I'm losing. Since I lost. And I have a low tempo hand. And he has a pretty high tempo deck. 
Yeah, okay. That's not a mistake. I just thin the I thin the spy out of my deck. So I don't like grant I can go into round two. So I play it now. I get the I get uh, an opportunity to, to mulligan whatever I get instead of having to mulligan the spy in the next round and just being left whatever I got. And also I don't have the opportunity to accidentally draw two in round three. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so that's not a mistake. But using the commander sworn, my win condition here was a mistake. And also not using my gills correctly. There we go. We took a more critical look at this big mistake that I make in this game, and I went uh, over two, you know, whatever points. I used Caretaker to win the game to steal his win condition. How many times have I said that before? A million. Thanks for watching.